Now, the parliamentary elections in Estonia have concluded. The reform party led by Prime Minister Kaya Kalas has emerged victorious. The result is not only significant for Estonia, but for Ukraine as well, as the current regime is one of the most staunch pro Kiev governments in Europe. The Prime Minister said that her party would keep up the pressure on Russia, and this victory implies that aid for Ukraine from Estonia is set to continue. And to understand why Estonia general elections are key for Ukraine in this war, we're now being joined by Stephen Golub, author and political commentator from California. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks very much for having me. My first question to you, to begin with, how do you assess the results of the elections in Estonia? Well, as you indicated, it's very favorable for Ukraine, significant beyond Estonia, in that it indicates that the population of that country, like the populations of many other countries in Europe, particularly Eastern or Central Europe, back Ukraine in terms of standing up to Russia's aggression and atrocities. It's not just a matter of principle, we should note, however. If Russia succeeds with crush in crushing Ukraine, it will have incredible ramifications for some other neighboring states, be they Moldova or Georgia or Poland or Estonia and the other Baltic states, because they will next be in the eye of Russia, targeted by Russia for aggressive moves and possibly even invasion itself. Right, absolutely. In fact, I will just come to that in a minute. As I'd mentioned earlier, the election results are important not just for Estonia, but for Ukraine as well. What can you tell us of its ties with Ukraine? It, well, you know, as a, as a fellow former part of the Soviet Union, it benefited tremendously from the breakup of the Soviet Union. Even more than uh, Ukraine, it had certain it had certain democratic traditions, or at least the roots of democracy that could flower, which has certainly happened there. Uh, so they share, in some respects, a common heritage of breaking away from the Soviet Union or benefiting from the, the, the uh, breaking up of the Soviet Union. And they share certain strong economic and po foreign policy interests, economic in terms of wanting to integrate with the world economy, whereas Russia is isolating itself more, and foreign policy interests in terms of wanting to remain independent republics, despite the wishes of President Putin and um, his supporters in Russia. Right, absolutely. Now, uh, Prime Minister Klaas's party is fully backed Ukraine in this war. Now, do you think Estonia has a very significant role in this war? Well, Symbolically, symbolically, yes, in terms of actually providing financial, military, diplomatic support, it's not nearly as significant as other countries, even if, even if we discount the U.S. or Germany or Britain or France, which are just simply bigger and more powerful and have greater resources, economic and military, to bring to bear. Even a country like Poland is more immediately significant given its border on Ukraine and given the size of Poland. But still, it's the victory of a pro-Ukraine party in Estonia is really, really important symbolically and in terms of signifying where its support for Ukraine could go from here, which is in a positive direction. Right, absolutely. Of course, it's also important to note here that Estonia is a member of both EU and NATO and has led international calls over the past year for military aid to help Kiev. What do you make of this? Oh, I think, you know, that support, a, a united bloc of countries in Europe, there are, a, you know, a couple of exceptions to the rules, such as Hungary, which has been more ambivalent about this. And for that, and that's because it tends to be heading towards being an authoritarian state itself uh, might be an exception to the rule. But the fact that there's a, a somewhat united block of countries in Europe that have actually come together um, against the Russian invasion of uh, Ukraine is significant. And ironically, the point of the Russian invasion was to weaken NATO or to show that NATO was weak. Quite the contrary, it strengthened the U EU, strengthened NATO. Um, is on the way of making them much more independent of Russian natural gas and oil supplies. And Estonia being part of that bloc, being part of that unity and not breaking away from it as this, as it might have been the case if this election had gone in the other direction, um, is itself significant. Right, absolutely. Now, through this war, of course, there have been questions over Russia's larger goal here. What's your assessment of the same? <laughs> 
Well, Russia's larger goal is to, you know, I'd say in some ways it comes down to the will of one man. Now, Russians may support him to a good extent, but if you had someone else in power in Russia, this war was not inevitable. Vladimir Putin has kind of um, an archaic view of what Russia is, what Russia, Russia was. He feels Ukraine is an intrinsic part of Russia, which is, um, uh, you know, sometimes uh, something of a fantasy. You ask Ukrainians how they feel about being part of Russia, and they see themselves as much uh, as, as a very independent country, an independent nation, an independent people. If I may, in terms of the bigger picture, in a sense, it's not quite military, but we have a sort of World War III brewing here. And I don't want to say military or nuclear or whatever across the globe, but between the forces of authoritarianism on the one hand and democracy on the other, democracies as flawed as they may be. And I think the authoritarian forces have kind of crested in many ways. It's not as though they've been defeated, but the fact that President Putin has had such trouble with the invasion of Ukraine says something about the flaws in the authoritarian, in the authoritarian model. One more thing I'll add in terms of the bigger picture mm -hmm. is that it's in India's interest actually to see things in this way because Russia is in some ways now a client state of China. Uh, if push comes to shove and there's a, if there's a war or, or other disputes between China and India, Russia is going to side with China because it depends tremendously on China for military, economic, diplomatic, and other t types of support. So yeah. I'm not one to tell India what to do, but I hope India is keeping that in mind as it decides where its own interests lie. Right, absolutely. India's position on this has been very clear from the start. Now, my other question here is Estonia's military assistance to Ukraine, it amounts to more than 1% of its GDP. Now, that's the biggest contribution of any country relative to the size of its economy. What's your take on this? Do you think it's effective and sustainable? That's a great question, a great point and a great question. I think it is because from the Estonian point of view, what happens in Ukraine is essential to their stability, to their economic security, to their actual physical sovereignty uh, and other important values and priorities. So even though it's consuming a good portion of their resources, it still is such a priority because if Ukraine falls to Russia or is, or even if Russia doesn't take over all of Ukraine, if it really decimates Ukraine to, to undermine it being a viable state going forward, then Estonia, as I mentioned previously, could be one of the countries that's next in terms of Russia undermining you, um, Estonia or actually physically invading it. Right. In fact, I was just going to come to this now just for more clarity. Estonia broke away from the Soviet Union in 1991. It's a member of NATO and EU, as I mentioned. What can you tell us of the impact of the war in Ukraine on Estonia, if at all? Oh, I think it's been... That's, that's another good question. On the one hand, it must be making people in Estonia feel insecure about their own future. You know, for a couple of decades, this is a country that's advanced economically, that uh, has, uh, and politically in terms of being a stable and successful democracy and economy. And now you have an invasion that is relatively close to its uh, borders by a country that once controlled it, Russia controlling Estonia when they were all part of the Soviet Union. So that must be a frightful experience or at least an intimidating experience to go through. On the other hand, it's seeing that you that Europe is more and more united, which is positive, that its place is in Europe, which in terms of a democracy and the economy is far better than being aligned with the Soviet Union, which is really just a corrupt petro state at this point. Uh, so, and, and it's being appreciated by the United States, by leading European nations and the like for the role that it's playing. So it's a mix, it must be a mix of emotions and perspectives there, but on balance, I think they're feeling positively about what they're doing, even at the same point that they feel threatened. Right, now just circling back to something that I'd asked earlier, now there have been calls by various governments to rein in the aid and money that's been poured in for Ukraine. If Kalas's party wishes to keep up support for Ukraine, what are the challenges that it's likely to face? 
oh, it's the same challenges I think we're facing in other countries, including my own. Uh, that that and I don't want to point. It, it, I don't want to paint the U.S. as a paragon of international virtue when we're talking about foreign policy or the like. My country has made mistakes. It's done things that I personally object to. It's done things that have not been in the interest of many countries around the world in in its history. It's also done some very good things in its in its history. So it's 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 a mixed legacy. But what we're seeing in some countries with a, not, a lot of money and resources being spent is some hesitancy on the part of opposition parties, on the part of populations to say, is this all worth it? But I really suspect that for the foreseeable future, given the stakes here, we will see continued support on the part of the populations of countries, be it Estonia or Poland or France or the United Kingdom or the United States to support this because it aligns not just with our values or the best values we demonstrate when when our best impulses come to the fore, but in terms of our national interests. If Russia were to succeed in Ukraine, then it would strengthen um, the role, the, the, the push for authoritarianism around the world, not just in Russia, but in terms of China, which is another expansionist power, and not just in terms of Ukraine, but in terms of the countries that border or are close to uh, China and Russia, such as India on the one hand, or China or um, uh, Taiwan in the other, on the other direction. All right. Well, Mr. Stephen Gold, thank you so much for joining us with all your insights on this. Thank you very much for having me.